today I want to chat about how the truckers, the freedom truckers, how they're winning and how they're losing. First of all, I'll talk about how they're winning. <clears throat> I'm very proud of these people for kind of reaching down deep and saying, hey, freedom's worth it. And I don't agree with their ideas of freedom necessarily, but they're, they're putting their, their feet and their wallets and their livelihood where their brain is and they're, they're stepping out and doing something about it. Unlike the couch surfers and the internet people who sit there like I do, hiding behind a camera, hiding behind a keyboard, saying stuff. These people are out there using their own fuel, their own trucks, maybe losing a bunch of contracts. They're, they're putting it on the line for what they believe to be freedom. And because they did that, that's why they so soundly defeated Trudeau, the kid up in Canada who's now just the laughing stock of liberals, conservatives, everybody. He's a laughing stock of everybody except maybe his little circle of intellectual, <laughs> maybe it's what they call themselves, uh, little college professors and the, the people in the media, the people who he surrounds himself with, who who pat him on and make him take his, uh, you know, his uh, propeller multicolored hat off and pat him on his head and say, you're a smart intellectual guy. You're doing a great job uh, when he's not around those people. Everybody else in the world knows he's a, a tyrannical bad guy idiot. So without the truckers, that would have only been obvious to maybe half the population of the world. And now almost everybody knows. So I think they won in that way. Uh, the Canadian truckers also won uh, in the sense that there were some of the bans that were lifted. <clears throat> they backed down and now throughout the world, uh, there are bans being lifted. I don't know if that's causation or correlation, but it's happening. And in many circles, the whole, you know, those silly face diaper things, they're, they're kind of just going by the wayside and they're not as important. And um, so that's, that's good. Maybe some places are not requiring the vaccine. There are a few, even in the, the corporate press, putting out some articles that are kind of saying, okay, the vaccine's not that great. And it's not really doing that much. And okay, the virus isn't that bad for most people. For old sick people, it's pretty bad. So there's a little bit more of that truth coming out. And that's, that's a good thing. So those are some areas in which the concept of the, the trucker's convoy uh, is, is a win uh, for society, for, for them, for the rest of us. The way that it's not a win, the way that it harms society is that it legitimizes the ruling class. It legitimizes the enemy of humanity, government. Anytime that you give a bully a, a mafia boss, a government ruler, anybody like that, anytime you ask their permission, voice your opinion to them, tell them what it is that you do or don't want, whether you're saying, hey, if you'll do this, I'll do this for you, bribing them. If you're threatening them and saying, hey, I know the only thing you're competent in or capable of is ruling others and being a master, I will not vote for you next time you, you come up for election. So that's one way to kind of sway them. Uh, but all these different ways to communicate with the ruling class, they all legitimize their existence. So that's why it's not better to vote libertarian or vote conservative than to abstain from participating in their nastiness. <laughs> This is, a, this is a difficult concept to grasp because we have been taught in many ways, many manipulative ways. We've been taught, you know, you, you have a right to vote. Boy, a lot of people have died so that you can have a right to vote. Take advantage of it. Go to the polls. Make sure, write, write a letter to your senator, <laughs> congressman, like that's going to matter. But write a letter to them. Let them know that you are a strongly worded letter. Let them know that you are very displeased. So say, dear Senator Paul Massey Feinstein, I love all that you're doing and thank you for your hard work and for caring about everybody. I do kind of wish that of the 400 new laws that you helped 
bring about in the last two years. I do kind of wish you'd roll three of them back just a little bit, dear master. Please don't beat me as hard. Please don't rule me as cruelly. I do acknowledge you're my master. Just please don't hurt me quite as much. That's what a strongly worded letter to, the, to a congressman is about. Or you can get really nasty. You know, if you do this again, I'm not going to vote for you. Whatever. Engaging with them is what gives them the fuel, the power. And if we continue, and when I say we, I mean a bunch of people who care about human freedom, uh, liberty, basic human rights of you know, we, we, we wind up on this rock somehow and then we want to live our life drinking the water or alcohol or soda pop, whatever it is that we want to drink. We want to eat what we want to eat. We want to be able to, to do stupid stuff and smart stuff. And we want to be able to build up um, our nest full of acorns for winter. We, we want to just do human things. And we don't want to be messed over by anybody. We just want to be able to do it. And for that group of us, those, those of us who really want that, we should not engage with the politicians. We should ignore them. We should, should circumvent them. Use cryptocurrencies. Use gold. Use the Federal Reserve note. Gosh, use it up is my advice. Um, use Federal Reserve notes, gold, silver, trade screwdrivers, whatever you've got to do to circumvent the, the government slash central banking system. That is, I think, how to make real, true, lasting change. Um, going to them and begging them to roll back a percentage of the tyrannical rules that they have imposed, that is simply legitimizing the other rules that you're not bringing up because you think, well, you know, we got to pick our battles. <clears throat> nope. This is how they're doing it. Just like for those of you that have done those Widowmaker jacks, you jack it up, and then each time you let the handle back up to get a new grip, it comes down just a little bit, but you've gained half an inch, even though it came back down a sixteenth of an inch. And it's a constant progression toward liberty being gone and more tyranny. And as they are jacking us up, we get excited each time when they raise the bar to do it again, and we say, hey, we just lowered a tiny bit. Not nearly as much as we came up from the last thing. From the Patriot Act, horrible, horrible anti-humanitarian, anti-liberty laws to all of the other little zoning laws, planning and zoning. And, and, and now all of a sudden, unlike 30 years ago in your rural little area, you are no longer allowed to go out and build a shed on your own farm, your own ranch, without seeking the government's permission. Really. Now, there might be a few places in, in the Ozarks or somewhere where you, there's still a little bit of that kind of freedom. But where I live in the Rocky Mountains, just a few years ago, yeah, you go build a shed, no big deal. Well, now you have to fill out the two or three page application with the county. Give them a few bucks. It's not much. They're nice, good, kind, loving folks, and they'll both say yes to it. They might not even enforce a bunch of the other stuff, but it's on the rule books, and it can start being enforced any moment they don't like you, any moment that, well, we only respond to things if we get a complaint. Well, anybody can complain anonymously, including the government employees who don't like the type of YouTube videos you're putting out. Be very careful. Don't get in bed with these bad guys. Don't ask them for permission. Don't tell them, I'm greatly displeased with how you were beating me yesterday. Nope. That is simply giving them more strength and more power. If you think you want some freedom and you think you want to be a liberty-loving, humanitarian kind of person, be intellectually consistent about it. Don't say, well, okay, I can see how some truckers should get vaccinated, but not all of them. Nope. If you want liberty, it's an all or nothing kind of deal. If it's not, then you're a situational libertarian. And that's kind of low brained and disgusting. Don't be that person. Be intellectually consistent. So the truckers have won in a lot of ways and they've lost in a lot of ways. They've showed their cards. This is, this is how people will, will 
kind of flop around and argue and they'll, well, yeah, the bosses will listen a little bit and they'll release the pressure valve just a little bit so that we don't all go crazy. <clears throat> but they, it, it, it's in the long run, we're still marching toward tyranny, unfortunately. And life is still really good for me. And it probably is for you, but we're marching in that very bad direction and it needs to stop. A couple of books I would recommend would be uh, The Most Dangerous Superstition by Larkin Rose, uh, Everyday Anarchy by Stephen Molyneux. Uh, those would be a couple of good starting books to understand some of these principles.